Hey everyone, it's the 2nd of December, so let's have a look at what I did in November. November is traditionally National Novel Writing Month and I started the month very motivated by doing the NaNoWriMo tag. And at the halfway checkpoint I was a little bit behind but I was not worried at all. But shortly after that I had to give up due to circumstances which are okay, I just couldn't manage. And thank you all very much for your support. Your words were very kind and supportive and that really meant a lot. I hope all of you who participated either won or or were happy with the experience that you had with your NaNoWriMo. Tell me in comments how you did. But we didn't only talk about NaNoWriMo this month. We also talked about how writing down what we do changed perspective. And I really liked how a lot of you tried out writing down what you do every day and how it helped you to feel more accomplished. Thank you very much for your feedback on that. I also showed you some of my favorite memoirs and uh, my favorite feelings and I really liked your comments on those videos as well just as well as on my Letters to November video. And I really am happy that you enjoy the series despite this month being rather short because I didn't really film a lot. And that already brings us to the books I read in November. I finished listening to The Android Stream by John Scalzi and I really enjoyed listening to it. The story was fascinating and he's so creative and imaginative and the way he tells his stories, it's just amazing. I really enjoyed John Scalzi as an author and I'm so glad I discovered him and I'm slowly working my way through all of his books. I also listened to Armada by Ernest Klein this month. It was also read by Will Wheaton, just like the John Scalzi book. And I don't have a full review video up for this book because I don't really have a lot to say about it. When it came out, I heard a lot of negative things about it, that people didn't like it or they were not happy with the writing, they expected more. I mean, of course, it's not another Ready Player One. It's not as amazing and outstanding, mostly because we've had Ready Player One now, so you can't do it again. But I did like the way it was told and narrated it has some nice ideas. I liked how the book played around with the meta discussion of like questioning the theories and the things behind everything and always going back between fiction and reality and being part of fiction. I really liked how that was done. Otherwise, the story was a little bit predictable and at some points it dragged on a little bit and was too repetitive. Overall, I liked the book. I don't regret reading it, but that's all I have to say about it. Onto the physical books. I finished reading my copy of The Arabian Nights. It's German, it's very old, and in the video I show you some of the awesome artwork inside. I really enjoyed reading the stories in sort of the original. In the comments, people said they read it in different languages and they had apparently different content. So I'm not sure if they changed the translation whenever they redo it, because this is from the 70s. So maybe today the Arabian Nights reads different or it also reads differently if you read it in English or in French or any other language. Another book I read and reviewed was The Singular and Extraordinary Tale of Mirror and Goliath by Ishbel B. And apart from the beautiful cover, this is a beautiful book. The story is told in pieces and parts from various perspectives. We don't get the full story in the beginning. We just have to piece it together from all the different perspectives and story parts we learn from the different characters participating in the story. And it's jumping around in perspective and time a lot and you are in different parts of the story. And I liked how that was done because it had you think and pay attention and you really needed to look like what's going on here and who's that now and I really enjoyed how that was done because it really made the story fascinating and you got to know the characters a lot better because you saw through everyone's eyes and that made you closer to them. And also the main characters, Mira and Goliath, I really liked the connection between those two and whenever I read about those two. What I found really interesting is that I saw on Goodreads that this is part of the John Lovehart series. So there's one character, John Lovehart, who is rather strange and the things he does are weird and wicked and he gets away with so many things which is... Yeah, you just have to wonder about that and there is quite a lot of violence connected to that character. So. It's not really a just happy, happy story. But I also think it's very interesting how the character is perceived by others. So I'm very interested in reading another book in his series. 
And the last book I read and also reviewed was Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This book is very creatively written and told. It's a case report and you see a lot of different parts of the case report. You read interviews, you read chat logs and other things that really tell the story. And in my review, I don't think I mentioned this as much as I should have maybe that the book the story lives from the way this book is told. A lot of you said like it may appear gimmicky, the writing and if it works or not, you were not sure. And for me, I think the story itself may seem rather bland if you had put it in normal story narration. But since it's written in this case report style, it really drags you in and you are glued to the pages, just wanting to know what's going on. And you feel so close to the characters and also the tone of voice is very sarcastic from some of the commentary of the case file report collectors. That is probably not a word. Anyways, I really think that this story lives from the way it's told. I saw quite a few other reviews by now. I totally missed that there was a hype about this book. I just saw it once before. And a lot of people talk about the romance and the YA characters, the teenagers, and I did not really pick up on that that badly because for one I think this story would not work if the main characters were not teenagers because adults react differently. They wouldn't do the things the teenagers do. So I think it works pretty well with the main characters as teenagers and the romance is a nice sparkly fact to motivate them but it's not too much at the center for me, if that makes sense. I mean, it's all about those two characters and the relationship they have during that whole creation, not in the relationship relationship part, but how they interact. But for me, that wasn't the center of the story. I was much more focused on the AI and the story around that and what will come out of that. And I also saw on Goodreads that this is going to be a series. I don't really know if I need a second book or if I want to have a second book. For me, the story is set in this book. It's ended. I'm quite happy with not having to read another book. So I'm not sure what the second book will be about and what will happen then and if it will be as great as this one, because I really, really like this book. And that was my November already. Thank you very much for being with me, supporting me and just watching. This month I hit the 5,000 subscriber mark and that was a nice surprise. Thank you very much. And I hope we are having a good December and then 2015 is over already again. How did that happen? Tell me in comments how your November was and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.